Yo guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of the FM Reboot. It's episode number 14 and today we're returning with two big games against the Blades and Foxes, both away from home in a free game away trip. Before we get to the games though, Shadow Wolves be getting on off camera. We're spoilers, but we've been on flames. It's been unbelievable to turn around. So to recap the last episode, obviously you would have seen the eight point target get exceeded after our back-to-back -back wins over West Ham and Norwich and our progress through to the Carabao Cup fourth round. In the run off camera, as you can see, lots of games, nine in total, eight in the league and one in the cup. And you wouldn't think we'd been off flames after the start of the run off camera, two defeats in our first three matches. First a loss away in North London, the Emirates against Arsenal, lost by two goals to one, didn't deserve anything from this game either. Uh, Aubameyang scored their first, saw their lucky goal uh, to make it one one and then late on it would have been the most undeserved point ever based on the bad luck we've got I guess we probably deserved a bit in our favour but Vasquez scored a late one in a 2-1 defeat and following that back to winning ways at home to Aston Villa by goal to nil uh, Jean Moutinho scoring earlier into the game he's out of contract at the end of the season by the way he will get a new one despite the fact he's now 58 years old uh, so maybe got sent off late on but held on to the win um, following that defeat in the Carabao Cup fourth round away at Old Trafford not fussed though won't show you the goals in this one picked a weak inside as we were do in the League Cup and we were knocked out there by the Red Devils but the fourth round where the board asked us to get to so we've done that and on the run after that it's been fantastic six games five wins no defeats and six straight clean sheets absolutely superb run 16 points from a possible 18 we've been on flames and not a single goal conceded in our last seven Premier League games is this, is this really Wolves? Like, seriously, based on how poor we were at times defensively, as far as the back end of last season in particular. Uh, we began with a 3-0 win at home to Everton, played some tremendous football in this game, by the way. Trincao scored our first, Jimenez with a bullet header, uh, made it two, and then later on, Traore con uh, converted a, uh, a cross into the far post across the ground in a 3-0 win against the Toffees, and after that, one of the wins of the series, if not the win of the series so far, went away to Old Trafford, looking for revenge after they knocked us out of the Carabao Cup a couple week and a half ago, and we won 3-0 with three goals in eight minutes. First big Chris getting his first goal for the club eight minutes after the restart of the hair sort of fumbled a effort on target entering Cal made it 2-0 and then literally 60 seconds afterwards Jimenez made it free he's going berserk there in the northwest man crazy win at Old Trafford did not expect that at all uh, following that Aussie days he following that goal to Shaw away on the south coast against Brighton but then three straight wins following uh, starting with a 2-0 win against Fulham where we scored a once again incredibly lucky goal six minutes after the restart Power Lopez shot off the woodwork and then just hit the goalkeeper on the back and trickled in NATO made it 2-0 though uh, in a big win there. Following that, another win against the West London side, and another 2-0 win uh, as well. Uh, once again, took a while to get going, but Jimenez from the spot made it 1-0 just after the hour mark, and then Trincao, three minutes before the break, made it 2-0. Trincao, by the way, this season has been absolutely amazing. Top scorer so for us this year, uh, this season. And our final game off camera was our third straight 2-0 victory. Pedro Nato at the double in this one. Ruben Nevers set up both goals as well. First one, brilliant teasing ball to get the Bravka off his line. But the spin of the ball allowed Nato to turn it in from tight angle. And then five minutes after the restart, turn in what I thought was a Nevers shot initially, but turned into a cross as he got his second assist. Nato got his second goal and we got our third straight 2-0 victory. So what a run for Wolves. Best of the series? No, best of the season. Best of the series would, of course, be our run in January last season. We just won every single game that was ridiculous but really good run for Wolves as you can see because of that we're now up to fifth place in the table 15 games played it's really weird right now there were so many get so many teams having games in hand I mean look there Leeds have got like four games in hand on certain teams right now but I guess that's December football isn't it but yeah up to fifth place right now 29 points on the board only three behind Chelsea in fourth though they've got two games in hand on us but most importantly with five clear of Arsenal in eighth and we've got a game in hand on the Gunners as well it's been a brilliant run, and I don't think there's anything else to show you in the run off camera. Uh, you might have seen we've had our FA Cup third round draw. That's against Coventry City, the Sky Blues at Molyneux. That'll be the start of January. And also our bank balance continues to decrease as well. We're down to £10 million now, well, just shy of £11 million. And the main reason why is because the wage bill is just so high here at Wolves. We've got £1.6 mil a week getting spent on player wages. And the fact is, we're just not generating enough income. And the main reason why is because we're not playing European football. We've got the TV uh, money in the Premier League, but no European 
championship football is what's really hurting us right now. Like Wolves' wage bill is, you know, similar to the type, you know, akin to the type of team that we play in Europe, Europa League football at the very least. We're not got anything at the moment, so that's why qualifying for Europe is a big, big bonus for us if we can hold on and do it. Same to the first game against the Blades, as you can see, no one is injured right now. That won't last long, and this is our team with a 4 2 3 1. Patricia's in goal, but for like Nuri, Connor, Chris, and Sonado, and Nevers and Forsby through the middle. By the way, if you follow me on Twitter, at DocLanders, you would have seen it this afternoon. Big interest in Big Morton, the mental man, including a Chinese Super League side, and you know they pay silly money sometimes for bang average players. Could I resist a £60 million bid on Morton Forsby? Yes. <laughs> Yes, I've never had a player like him before, man. If you're going to cash in for any sort of fee, absolutely no chance. He and Nevers are through the middle. Treo and Nate on the inside forwards and Mutino to support Jimenez up top. Poor Ward Prowse, man. Seriously, he's, he's really struggled to nail down a first 11 spot. That's just because the, these three here have been amazing this year. Uh, on the bench, Bettinelli, Bolly, Roberts, Ward Prowse, Pedenstra, and Cal, and Silver as well. First to two, it's the informed Blades away at Bramwell Lane. Come on, Wolves, let's extend the winning run. Yeah, at one point, the Blades were just outside of the Europa League spot this season. They've fallen away a little bit, but again, there's a long way to go. I'm not even at the halfway point right now, and they're doing pretty well. So this should be a tough test. We lost here at Brownwell Lane last season as well, if I remember correctly. And we failed to win at Molyneux too. So Sheffield United at the moment, a team for us to struggle against, it seems, every time we face them. First chance falling to them as well. Great ball by Oliver Norwood and Joe Bryan hits it off the post and gives them the lead. We struggle so much against these guys. I knew our unbeaten run was going to come very shortly and I did predict it would be in this episode as well. But I thought it would probably be the Foxes that do it. But then again, after last season's struggles against Sheffield United, it's not a surprise we're 2-0 down. God, what a brilliant run, man. Seriously, six games without a defeat. Had six straight clean sheets as well, didn't we? I just said that earlier, but 2-0 down, 19 minutes in. Just cannot handle these blades. They're too sharp. I was going to say no pun intended. Clearly, pun intended. McBurney drops down the cross of the middle, a nice little layoff. Mousset with the goal. It's 2, 20 minutes in. Got some decent players, don't get me wrong, as Jimenez makes it 2-1, but I thought we'd put up a bit of a better fight, and maybe that now the Mexican is half the deficit, we will. NATO with two goals in the last game, and assists there as well. It's so hard to choose whether we go with NATO or Trincao in that right side, because Francisco's been amazing, but don't forget he's only here on loan. He won't come back permanently, and NATO is just such a great young player as well, but Ramsdale caught in no man's land. Jimenez makes it 2-1, game back on. I'm going to show you NATO stats really quickly. No, I can't because the highlights are coming thick and fast. But he's doing okay. He's not developing significantly quickly, but he's doing all right. And again, he's only 20 or maybe 21 years old, I think. So long way to go as Traore smashed it way off target. 10 minutes to go for half time. Relatively easy in first half this. There's NATO. There we go. With the increase in determination, that's why he got the start today. As that ball it should be picked up by Joe Bryan, which it is. Forsby's got the mentality, but not the pace. <laughs> As big Chris wins it back. And we shall build from just inside the Sheffield United half. Oh, what a ball. Oh, what a ball. NATO recently has been such great form. What a ball. I thought Neves' assist against the Magpies was good. That's probably a sister to the series so far. What a through ball. Talk about Fred and the needle. And Jimenez once again catches Ramsdale off his line. 2-0 down. Battle back to 2-2. The Mexican with both. Great first half this. We can still win this. Keep working hard and it will come. I, I never go harsh on my boys unless it's warranted. Oh, what a great start to the second half. Neves down. Brilliant. Potential fire injury. I think that'll be all right. What I'm going to do here then is bring on James Ward Prowse and change his role to box to box to allow him to get forward a little bit more. I do like a deep line playmaker alongside a ball midfielder. Someone who just runs around and chases shadows, and then the other guy sort of just sits there to spread balls forward. But if we can get Ward Prowse forward a bit here. We could possibly get more service to him and as you speak of the devil's on the ball. Needs a teammate. Finds Jao. And he plays a couple of one-twos with Nato for Semedo takes over. And here is that man once again, Pedro Nato crossing cleared. Definitely see a winner in this game. Very, very action-packed and even thus far, but definitely so someone claiming all three points. And based on how we've defended, which is so strange considering how good our record was defensively recently, I wouldn't be surprised if the Blades get another soon after the restart. Right on cue, three two. What is it about Lee Smooth say, by the way? But have you guys found this in your saves as well? 
The dude turns into a goal machine. <laughs> He's like Thierry Henry as Jimenez heads that corner just off target. I swear I've done so many FM saves, both this year and last year as well, where Lise Mousset literally turns into one of the most lethal strikers in the country. It's crazy, man. 3-2 just past the Almar, but this game is still very much on. NATO tries to beat Luke Freeman and does. Back to Semedo. Moutinho on the edge has Warprowse with him, shot deflected, and he picks it back up. Nuri crossing. NATO should win that first and does. Back to Semedo. Jimenez can't convert from close range and the blades will clear. Still feel confident we'll get some more chances with 25 minutes to go, but it's taking them. That's going to be key. Warprowse's corner headed away and the chance remains alive. God, what a game. See, I don't mind too much when I lose games like this because they're both fun, action-packed, and there's positives to take from it as well. Trevor finds NATO. Oh, what brilliant football. Oh, it's glorious. What a move and what a finish. This dude's on fire. Well, I think I made the right call. Keeping Trincao on the bench. This is just glorious football. Great passing and movement. And NATO would have finished as well. Yeah, I was thinking, who starts this game, man? Like, I know NATO scored both against the Magpies, but Trincao's been our player of the season so far. Definitely made the right call. Pedro is just on one. 3-3 free, free in a six-goal thriller. And we still got just over a quarter of an hour to play. Five and a half minutes to go. I said someone's going to win this. I see it happening. As Rian Brewster is shut down by Morton and our space to cross. And oh my god, Lee's Mousset is unreal, man. Off the bar, still 3 3. Six minutes of stoppage time. No one wants this game to end, but it will. And in the end, I was wrong. It finishes a point apiece, and I think that's the right result as well. Neither side deserved to lose that, man. That was an absolute cracker. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that performance. Again, I've mentioned before, like, I don't mind these sort of games where we don't win. If there's a lot of positives, we played some pretty decent football as well. We certainly did. Three great goals. <sighs> what did I say? That fly injury might just be a bruise. Nope, torn hamstring. Well done, Doxy boy. Jinxing it once again, you knobhead. Um... <laughs> Great game, I tell you, that was brilliant, man. So, moving on, second and final game, hopefully just as exciting, but us being on the winning end of it, it's Leicester away at the King Power right now, sat in 13th place. Tough start for them. There's no way they're going to stay there for the rest of the season. They'll make a run in the second half of the season, I'm sure, and they could kickstart their season with a big win here against the side in a Europa League play. So, heading into the game, it will be the 4 2 3 on one change to our lineup, of course, and also one brief change to our tactics as well. As you know, Leicester likes to play those balls over the top to exploit or utilise the pace of Jamie Vardy, I should say. We're going to drop our defensive line down to deeper uh, in this game and see how we get on. So, Patricio's in goal. Back for his like Nuri, Cody, Big Chris and Samedo of Warprowse now coming in for the injured Neves alongside Forsby. He'll play in that box-to-box -box midfield role. Trey and Nato on the wings with Moutinho supporting Jimenez up top on the bench. Bettinelli, Bolly, Roberts, Jordal, Pedence, Trincao and Silva as well. Second and final game. Leicester, let's see if it's just as action-packed and full of goals. Come on, uh, Walcock, come on, Wolves. <laughs> oh, the Fulham save. I do hope to bring it back as Michael Brighton's going to whip in a free kick to the back stick. You just know. No, he doesn't. Oh, quick routine. Johnny Evans on the turn. Back to Danny. Oh, off the training ground. Ings makes it 1-0. And Johnny Evans, the playmaker. Wow. Sorry, I just want to see that again before I get into the Fulham details. Johnny Evans with the hold-up. And Danny Ings... With the finish, 1-0 Foxes. Yeah, I thought this would be the game our unbeaten run comes to an end. Definitely looking probable after that red-hot start for the host. Yeah, so basically, um, I've managed to get like the screen off my Mac with some help um, of a uh, housemate and a housemate's partner. And uh, what I need to do is extract the hard drive and then buy a piece of hardware, which you guys recommend for me, where I can get the files off the hard drive and get the Fulham save off of that. Um, I don't know how I'll be able to do that exactly, but I'm sure there's tutorials on YouTube. And oh, what a great save, Casper Schmeichel. And then I'll be able to resume the Fulham saves. I'm hoping I'll be able to do it soon enough. But um, again, I need to be able to know what I'm doing, which at the moment is a big problem, and uh, buy that piece of hardware as well. But uh, I'm still I'm still working on it. But for now, I'm really enjoying this wall save, man. Very fun and very challenging as well. Still can't get over that goal, man. Johnny Evans, seriously. That was brilliant hold-up play, wasn't it? As Leicester look for their second here. They've got a man out wide and they found him as well. Like Nuri to beat. Holds him up well, but can't deny the cross. And all Brighton makes it too. Had a feeling today's episode will be the one where our winning and unbeaten run comes to an end. And it is. Leicester are far too good of a team to be where they are in the table right now. So this does not surprise me one bit as 49-year-old Jal Moutinho gets after it and goes on the run. All right. Oh, what a ball. And oh, NATO's been so good recently. If he scores that, that changes the whole complexion of the game. Just like against Sheffield United. 
hits the post, probably should have finished it really, JWP's free kick, headed in by Connor Codido, and straight away we get back in the game, 2-1. Man, talk about your action-packed games today. <laughs> Seriously. Brilliant stuff here. Oh, free kick on the edge. And JWP has 20 for free kicks. He just set one up. Absolutely beautiful. Pop it on 3D. Guys, feeling like deja vu. Go two goals down early and then respond directly afterwards. And that is top pins from James. Glorious free kick. And again, because Forsby and Moutinho and Nevers have been so good, it's been hard to get the guy in the team. I've given him some game time, but a lot off the bench. But he's so good. Spent 20 million on him. It, it's been a waste having him sat on the bench. But now that Nevers is down... This is his time to shine. We're not doing badly at all. If everyone continues to work hard, we'll win this. Second half to begin. What a brilliant couple of games today. And it's highlight after highlight after highlight at the moment. I can't catch my breath as I, Nuri is going to play it down the line to Adama Trey or he go on the overlap himself with a speedster. We'll go from left to right. We haven't seen much of this this season. Oh. He puts it well wide. He's got a thing for playing against Leicester Trey, all right? He loves it. Do you remember last season? I think it was the FA Cup fifth round, wasn't it? When he scored that hat-trick against Leicester here at the King Park. It was amazing. He scored that incredible like last-minute goal from like 30 yards out as well. It's such a shame that this year Traore is all bright and gets his second and heads in Leicester's third. Such a shame that this season he's not been that good. But when he wants to, the dude is just unreal. He's like that kind of like really streaky sort of player. Do you know what I mean? One of those sort of players that you can go like seven or eight games doing absolutely nothing and bang, he just explodes into life, which is kind of sort of fitting really since he's such an explosive player where he scores like five goals in three games or something ridiculous. And oh God, just lost Nevers and now Nato goes down. Potential foot injury for Pedro. Got a feeling that might be broken. Let's bring on Trincao. We've got 15 minutes to go. Can we salvage a point just like we did at Bramwell Lane? Into stoppage time. Throw for Wolves. Moutinho back to White Nuri. And now JWP, the orchestrator today, gets round one. Moutinho, shot blocked. Will Prowse. Oh, Schmeichel, he's so good, man. Mentioned this in an episode last season. Like, Kasper Schmeichel, he loves Leicester to pieces. He's won the Premier League there. He's won the FA Cup there. I feel very confident he'll stay and finish his career there. Oh, just one of those days today. Just one of those days. But he's, he's, he, he deserves to be playing Champions League football, man. He's such a quality goalkeeper. But late rally from Wolves. But I think it's going to come in vain. Some great resilient performances in these two games today. But unfortunately, unlike at Bramwell Lane, this one will end in vain. And he will taste defeat for the first time after an eight-game stretch of no losses. 3-2. There it is. But again, fair play. I'm not going to complain. It was not only a fun game, action pack, but loads of positives out there. And JW P was amazing. Can't fault any of your performances. It was just one of those days. And it was. Like I said before, don't go harsh on your players when they've played well, man. Seriously. Be kind. Kindness leads to confidence? I don't know. NATO down three to six weeks, so that is very frustrating. He will join Ruben Nevers in the treatment room. Didn't I say at the start of the episode something like, yeah, that won't last long. What I meant was our players will start getting injured soon enough, and they did. Two big injuries today to two of our best players this season. That was this episode of the FM Reboot, guys. Big thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. If you had, then please drop a like. After you will have a fantastic day, and we've got some very tough fixtures coming up, so I think we will do is come out with our FA Cup third round tie home to Coventry. We're going to have to win that one for sure if we're going to have any chance whatsoever getting back to the fun like we reached last season and of course Liverpool away at Anfield that'll be fun there welcoming the champions have a great day guys much love to you all and I'll see you for next episode of the FM Reboot very soon